with Jesus. Good morning, everybody. Welcome again. Uh, 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 today's message is hell. Okay? Is it real? Is it fake? Is it an actual place? What is it? What does the word say about hell? Amen? So that's what we're going to get into it. And we're still in our parables with Jesus series. And, and, and this is a parable on Luke 16, verse 19 through 31. So we're going to get we're going to get into it. But before we do, let us pray. Amen. Dear God, we just want to thank you, Lord God. We, we, we want to thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord God. We want to thank you for giving us wisdom this morning, Lord God. For giving us the word this morning, Lord God. For giving us another uh, a breath of life, Lord God. And we want to enjoy it to the fullest, Lord God. This is the day that the Lord has made, the Bible says. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you for today's Lord, today, Lord God. And, and Lord, open up our ears, our minds, our hearts, our bodies, our souls, Lord God, to be able to receive your word, Lord God, your truth, Lord God, that it may change us, that it may rearrange us, Lord God, and, and, and that you may get the glory, Lord God, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. So, now, there's a lot of beliefs in hell, okay? So, many people believe that when Jesus spoke about hell, he was talking about uh, uh, um, uh, different places. So there's a lot of different beliefs out there. Uh, there's probably too much to, to really get very specific on all of them, but you know, many people believe that that it is a physical place. May, many people believe that it is not a physical place. Many people believe that hell is just a separation from God. Many people believe that hell is this life that we're living in right now. A lot of people believe that we're living in hell right now, and then when we die, we go to heaven, okay? So there's a lot of beliefs uh, uh, about hell, and, uh, and then there's people that believe that there isn't a hell, okay? That, that it's not real, and, and, and that uh, uh, when we just die, we just cease to exist. There's reincarnation and all kinds of things, right? Uh, people believe that when they die, they come back to life as a, maybe an animal, a cow, or, or another person, or different things, right? So there's a lot of beliefs. And so today we're going to get into it. Um, and first, let me say this, okay? This is not a subject that I, that, that, that I get up and when God told me, hey, you're going to preach on this, uh, uh, this was uh, Monday morning. Okay, he told me, last Monday morning, he told me, you're going to preach on, pre preach on this. And I'm like, ah, God, can, can you just give me something else? You know, maybe can I give the blessings of the Lord, you know, a message like that, you know. But the truth is that we as preachers, as Christians, as ministers, as disciples, we must preach the whole truth from the beginning to the end. Okay. That's what Jesus told his disciples. That's what Jesus told you. If you're a disciple, if you're following Jesus Christ, that's what he told me, to preach the whole truth, to preach it to the world, okay? And so I can't pick and choose the things that I want to preach, okay? And, and, and just the things that maybe you want to hear, I can't do that. I got to give it to you, everything. And so this is not something that I'm like, yeah, I want to preach about this. But it's something that, uh, I'm commanded to do. Amen. But I believe that this is going to change your, your thinking. I believe that this is going to open your, your way of thoughts. And I believe that this is going to change probably your life forever. If you can get this, it's going to change your life forever. Amen. So we're going to go to it. It is Luke 16 verse 19 through 31. Luke 16 verse 19 through 31. And this is still Jesus preaching right here. And this is a story about the rich man and Lazarus. Okay? And so we're going to start. Luke 16, verse 19 through 31. And Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat 
what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham from far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things, but now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. So, the story is talking about two people here, the rich man, Lazarus, and then also Abraham, right? And what is happening here? That this rich man dies, notice that it says he died, okay, so he died and was buried, all right, so you die and you're buried, and then he was in Hades. Hades is translated as hell, okay, and some people, uh, um, the Hebrew word, word for Hades is Shoel, all right, and so some people believe that uh, uh, when it's talking about Hades right here, it's just talking about the place of death and burial. Okay? A place that, that was back then, that that's where they buried the dead. But, but listen here. Because it said here, he died and was buried, and then it, it, period, in Hades where he was in torment. See? So, there was two places here. Okay, and there was some kind of division, and and between the two places there was some kind of division, right? Because Abraham said, "Listen, we cannot go down there, and you cannot come up here. We can't. There is a division. There's something that separates us, where no one can go from here to there, or there from here, right? And so, uh, uh, the rich man is actually in a physical place, as you can see here." He says that this place is a place of torment, right, and a fire, right, and that he's tormented. He's being tormented. Now, if he was just dead and ceased to exist, then how could it be tormented? If we die and we cease to exist, then we wouldn't be tormented. We just cease to exist, right? So this is an actual physical place here that we're looking at. So, he's saying agony and torment. He describes it as agony, torment, and fire. Okay? That's how this rich man describes it. Agony and torment is, is the death, by definition, is severe suffering and or mental suffering. So, it's described as an actual place. And then Abraham says, right, because he's like, well, send your, your uh, uh, he's like, just send Lazarus to tell my brothers. I have, I have a big family. Uh, uh, tell everybody about this place. See, he's trying to warn everybody about the place that he's in being tormented. Abraham says, listen, we've sent out a bunch of prophets already. We sent out Moses. We sent out the prophets. There's people been preaching about this. There's all these people coming to warn people, 
And if they didn't listen to them, they won't even listen to, to somebody that dies and rises again. Who died and rose again? Jesus Christ died and rose again. So that means that, listen, there's going to be Christians out there that believe in Jesus, that believe in his resurrection, that believe in his word, but they don't believe in hell. That's dangerous. And, and Jesus here is preaching about hell. But listen, this is not the only time he preached about hell. Jesus preached more about hell in the Bible than anybody else did. As a matter of fact, Jesus preached more about hell than he preached heaven. That tells you something. Jesus, time after time, kept warning people about hell. Time after time. And so you say, well, that's just one verse. Listen, I'll give you more. There is tons that Jesus preached on. Watch this. In Matthew 25, 41, Jesus describes it as a place of eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Watch. I'll tell you what it says. Matthew 25, verse 41. Jesus said this. Then he will say to those in his on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So that's Jesus. Again in Matthew 8, 12, Jesus describes it as a place of darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Now, if you just died... Why would there be weeping and gnashing of the teeth? That means grinding of the teeth. That means there's torment that you're grinding your teeth. Weeping and gnashing of the teeth. And darkness, right? Mark 9, 43. Okay? Jesus describes it as a place of eternal fire. Eternal fire. A long going on fire. I mean, this guy described it as fire, right? Luke 13, 28, Jesus describes it again as a place of weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Matthew 25, verse, verse 46, Jesus is Christ, describes it as eternal punishment. In Revelation 20, verse 10, it describes it as a lake of fire and brimstone, a sulfur, where there is nonstop torment forever. There's evidence. Jesus talked about it so many times, different in different parables and different things that he said. And basically, he was warning us. See, Jesus didn't want us to go to hell. Watch. Watch what Revelation 20:10 verse says. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. It's nonstop, you guys. See? And there's a lot of Christians out there that don't believe that it's an actual physical place. That is dangerous. Now, they believe in heaven, but they don't believe in hell? Hmm. See? A lot of preachers won't touch on this because if they do, they're afraid that people are going to walk out of their church, stop tithing, stop coming, all these things. They just want to preach to you blessing after blessing after blessing. But the truth is, is that there is blessings and cursings and God says to choose the blessings. But they're both there. And so our jobs as preachers, our, our job as women and men of God, as disciples, is to preach the whole truth. Not, not just pick and choose what Jesus said, but to preach the whole thing. And then some people will say, well, wait, David. Why would a good and loving God build a hell for us? Why would he send us to hell? The answer is simple. He doesn't. He doesn't send you to hell. He doesn't. See, like I said in Matthew 25, verse 41, it said that he built it 
for the devil and his angels or the devil and his demons. They're fallen angels. The devil is a fallen angel. An angel that was good and glorious turned bad. And so God created it for them, not for you. He created it for them. The problem is, is that the devil has been lying to us and tricking us into following him into the lake of fire, into hell. It's our choice, you guys. From the beginning, when, when God created Adam and Eve, he created them sinless. He created them holy. I mean, he created them uh, 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 without sin. All right? And they were close to God. There was a relationship with God. Because God is good. God is holy. God is pure. See? God is sinless. And God cannot be around sin. If he is holy, he cannot be around unholy things. You see? And so when he first created humankind... We were supposed to be close to God. And then the devil came in and tricked Adam and Eve into committing sin. And that separated us. Sin separates us from God. That's the first death. That is death. Separation from God. That's the first death. And ever since then, he's, the devil's been tricking every, everybody to follow him. And commit sin into a life of sin, right? And to follow him into hell. But see, Jesus came to warn us of that. And Jesus came to save us from hell. The bad news is that sin separates us from God. And that when we follow a sinful life, we're leading down the path where the devil's taking us to hell. The good news is that God made a way. That's the great news. God developed a plan. He said, hey, I love you so much that I'm going to send my son to take your punishment, to take all of your sins and lay them on the cross. He's going to take the punishment so that you don't have to. So that you wouldn't go to hell, but that you would choose life in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. So we have that choice. We all have that choice. We could either accept Jesus. We could either accept the gift of God of salvation through Jesus Christ. Or we can say, you know what? I don't even want to hear this, Pastor David. I don't even want to hear what you got to say. I don't, I don't want to hear that. I'm good. I don't need God. Right? See, Jesus once preached. And he was healing people and he was delivering people from demons. And the people there said, hey, we want you to leave. They told Jesus to leave. And Jesus did. He left. Today you can tell Jesus to leave and say, uh, I don't want to hear this message. I don't want to hear that. Or you can accept them and ask for his gift of salvation. See, the Bible says that tomorrow is not promised to you or me, so we don't know when we will die. So this is the day that the Lord has made to get it right with God. This is your greatest life insurance. People are out there always buying life insurance because when they die, they'll have money for all the things. But guess what? I mean, we buy all kinds of stuff to secure ourselves. Right? We put on a seatbelt when you drive. You have all kinds of safety things that you put on. Put on a helmet. You know, when, when you go to a construction site or, or things like that, they got helmets on. They got steel toe boots to try to save them from, from disasters around. I'm telling you today, put on Jesus Christ in your life to save you from the pit of hell. Amen. See, Jesus took the punishment. God loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son. 
He took the punishment for you. He took my punishment. He took all of our sins. Right? John 3.16, it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. 17, it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. See? He didn't send Jesus to condemn you. He sent Jesus to warn you and to save you from your condemnation, from mine. I'm a sinner just like everybody else. But by grace, through the grace of God, he loves us so much that he sent Jesus. Will you receive him today? Will you accept this gift of salvation? Will you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? See, if you jumped out of an airplane and you jumped without a parachute, there would be consequences. You might not believe in gravity and say, no, I'm going to be fine, but that doesn't take away from the truth. Doesn't matter what we believe, it doesn't take it away from the truth. I told my daughter last night, if I told you that that was a cat and I was pointing to a dog and I said, I believe that's a cat. And she's like, no, it's a dog. I said, no, 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 I believe it's a cat, it's a cat. See, it doesn't matter what I believe, the truth is still remains the truth. There's a lot of false teachers out there. There's a lot of things that are leading us away from the true relationship of God. Read the Bible for yourself. I just gave you a ton of verses. Read it for yourself. Get it in your head to, for yourself. Get it in your soul. And let it change you. Will you accept Jesus Christ today? See, it doesn't matter. Like I said, if you jumped out of a plane and you didn't have a parachute, it doesn't matter what you believe. You can say, I believe I can fly. It's still not going to help you. But now if you jumped out of the airplane and you have that parachute on you, it's going to save you. Jesus is your parachute. He's the one. Put Jesus Christ on your life. Put him in your heart. Let him inside your heart. Ask for forgiveness, repentance, and he will show you how to live a better life. Not a perfect one, because we're still not perfect. But you have that parachute once you accept Jesus Christ in your life. Will you do it today? If that's you, I want to pray with you. Let us pray. Dear God, we just want to thank you right now, Lord God. And I know that there's women right now, men right now, there's young ladies, there's young men right now watching that want to receive you, Lord God. And so, Lord, we come humbly on your throne, Lord God, asking for forgiveness. Forgive us of our sins. Lord, come into our hearts, our lives, Lord God. We believe in you. We believe that you died for our sins and that you rose again. And Lord, save us from hell. Lord, we want to uh, uh, turn our ways and focus on you. We thank you, Lord God. And we know now that we are saved because we are putting you on our lives as that parachute. See, the Bible says if you prayed, if you just asked for, for God's forgiveness, if you just did that right now, that there is the whole heaven, that there's a party going on in heaven, that angels are rejoicing over one sinner. Heaven is rejoicing over you right now because you just put on Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. There's a party going on just for you. I don't care if you're alone in a bedroom. I don't care where you're at. There's a party going on just because you received Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching. If this blessed you, Please share it. There's people that need to hear this message. Amen. There's people that, uh, that we need to warn about hell. And that's it. All we got to do is warn. It's up to them to decide. Thank you for watching. Until next time, share this 
Amen. Go to the website. Watch the other ones. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed weekend. God bless you.